Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Elder Nathaniel, and to my right, Deacon Asap. Today's topic is going to be interracial marriage. But before we get to that topic, let's go to John chapter 8, verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So black man, Latin man, Latin woman, and black woman, if you want the truth, you must humble yourselves and acknowledge that you are the biblical Israelites, okay? From there, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3 and 4, okay? Let's get the law on interracial marriage. Is it okay? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughters thou shalt not give unto his sons, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. So do y'all hear the law? You're not to give your sons unto their daughters, nor take their sons for your daughters. No interracial marriage. That's the law of God. But you know what a lot of you do? You search the Bible for it to justify your wickedness. And you go, what about, what about Moses? Moses married an Ethiopian. Yes, Moses did marry an Ethiopian. And the Lord Most High had mercy and allowed him. Why? Remember, where were the Israelites? In captivity. When Moses killed the Egyptian for smiting his brother, where did he run? He ran and fled to the wilderness in the land of Midian. There were no Israelites there for 40 years. So Moses married a woman and had two sons, okay? Then he went what? He went back to get um, the Israelites and to give the... Law, not the law. He brought forth the plagues on Pharaoh. So now, you are not Moses, okay? And the Most High told Miriam and Aaron, mind your business, shut the hell up. I allowed Moses to do it, okay? But are you in Moses' situation today? Are your people in captivity in another land and you're someplace else? Huh? No, you're not. You're not in that situation. Then the next set of them go, oh, okay. What about... Mm, mm. Oh, Ruth. What about Ruth the Moabite? That's what you do. Let's read the law. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 23 and verse 3. So we read the law already about no interracial marriage. Let's see what God says about the Moabites and Ammonites. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Now, your question first and foremost may be, how do you know the Ammonites are the Japanese and the Moabites are the Chinese? When you read Genesis, okay, the history of Sodom and Gomorrah, when the Mosai destroyed five cities, okay, with uh, uh, their going meteors came down, destroyed the place, right. okay, you had Lot in a cave with his two daughters, okay, remember his wife was turned to a pillar of salt. His two daughters said, listen, everybody is dead. They thought everybody was wiped out, okay? They said, um... Let's get them drunk. Let's get them drunk. And lay with them. And lay with them, exactly. Thank you. That's what happened. So then, what happens when a, a, a daughter has sex with her father and brings forth children? What is the popular medical... Uh, terminology. Terminology. It's called what? Mongoloidism or Down syndrome. When your eyes... You get that funny look in your eyes... Okay? That pushed in face. Exactly. And those on. They all got, when you look at them, they all got that. Those same features. Same features, the flat face, the eyes is chinked out. Right. Okay? So one son became the father of the Japanese, that was Ammon. The other son became the father of the Chinese, that was Moab. Okay? Now, when you read in Ezekiel, it tells you that I'm going to throw this in there. It says that Nebuchadnezzar took the children of Moab to the east. And remember, Babylon was already in the east, so when it said the east, it meant further east, okay? So that's where you got your Chinese and your Japanese. Now, from there, so we got the two laws, right? We got the law, not to, no interracial marriage, and we got the law about Moab and Ammon, that they should not enter the congregation unto the tenth generation forever. So now, let's go to Judges chapter 21. We're going to hit the book of Ruth now. But let's, before we get there, remember, the book before Ruth is the book of Judges. Now, my question to you is this. Were the Israelites keeping the laws of the Most High by the time you get to the book of Ruth? When you read through the book of Judges? Let's read Judges 21, verse 25. 
Judges chapter 21, verse 25. Watch this. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. You read it again. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Not according to the laws of the Most High. So the Israelites were not following the laws of the Most High. Understand that. Now, that leads us to the book of Ruth. Ruth, we want chapter 1. Read verse 1 through 6 for us. Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah. Now the Most High brought a famine in the land. Why? Because Israel was sinning. Why? Because every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Come on. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He went into the country of Moab. Mm -hmm. He and his wife and his two sons. And his two sons, his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi. Naomi. And the name of his two sons... Ma Marlon and Chilion, Ep Ephrathites of the Bethlehem Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. Mm -hmm. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. So, Naomi's husband died. Go ahead. And she was left and her two sons. And her two sons what? And she was left and her two sons. Mm -hmm. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. Oh, the two sons took wives of the women of Moab. Now, we already read the law. No interracial marriage... Don't give their sons to your daughters or vice versa. And it said, Moab and Ammon shall not enter the congregation of the Lord until the tenth generation forever. So why did these two brothers now marry women of Moab? Because Judges 21 verse 25, read that again for us. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So now get back to the marriage. And they took them wives of the woman of Moab. The name of one was or Orpa, Orpa. And the other name of the other was Ruth. Now what verse is that? That was four. Read down to six. And they dwell there about ten years. Mm -hmm. And Marlon and Chilion died also. So the two husbands, God killed them. They were, they were put to death. They died. Okay, the two men died. Go ahead. Both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Mm. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. So Naomi got up that she wanted to return. She wanted to leave the land of Moab. Go ahead. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. So the Lord was having mercy on Israel again and giving them bread. So she wanted to return to Israel. Go to chapter 4. I'm just jumping. I'm jumping ahead. Many of you know the history. One daughter left, uh, left and Ruth stayed with Naomi. Okay? We want Ruth chapter 4 and verse 10. Now I'm going to sum it all up to you. I'm going to sum it all up. Uh, Naomi said, why don't you go back to your own people? Ruth said, no, let your people be my people. Let your God be my God. She said, I want to stay with you, Naomi. They go back to the land. And what happened? Deuteronomy 4 and 10, please. Deuteronomy, um, Ruth chapter 4, verse 10. Go ahead. Moreover, Ruth and the Moabitess, the wife of Marlon, have I purchased to be my wife. So stop right there. Now this is Boaz speaking. Boaz the Israelite, okay? He purchased Ruth the Moabite to be his wife. Now when you read this whole story in there, we don't have all day to read it, but read it on your own. It said one of the closest of kin to uh, Ruth's husband did not want her. Remember, the two sons died. So one of the daughter-in-law of Naomi left. Okay, Ruth wanted to stay with Naomi. She said, let your people be my people and your God be my God. But there's a problem. Okay, watch this. There was a law that there should be no sons of Israel cut off. Okay, so what happened? There was a law that said the nearest of kin had to marry the wife to raise up seed. Watch this. Go to Ruth 4 and we want to start at verse, we want verse 4 to 6. Ruth chapter 4, verse 4. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me, that I may know. For there is none to redeem it besides thee. And I, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. So this is Boaz, a near of kin, but he's speaking to a closer of kin to Naomi's son. So he's asking him to redeem it, some parcel of land. 
He says, I will redeem it. Now watch this. Go ahead. Then said Boaz, what day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi? The day that you buy this field. Listen good. The day that you buy this field. Come on. Thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabite. You must buy it of Ruth also the Moabitess. Go ahead. The wife of the dead. The wife of the dead. Mm, go ahead. To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. So Boaz is laying down a law for this next of kin to one of the sons of Naomi. Now watch what happens. Go ahead. What verse you at? Uh, verse 6 now. Go ahead. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou mine right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now notice when it was just redeeming the land, he said, yeah, I could do it. But then when it said, okay, well, the day you buy this land, you got to take on Ruth the Moabite. He goes, uh-uh, lest I mar my own inheritance. Why? Because the child that they would have had would have been not in his name, but in the name of the dead man. Now, watch this, verse 10. Ruth 4, verse 10. Moreover, Ruth the Moabite is the wife of Malan. Have I purchased to be my wife? This is Boaz speaking. So once that nearest of kin rejected Ruth, Boaz said, I'm going to marry Ruth and raise up children to the name of Malan. Read it again. Moreover, Ruth the Moabite is the wife of Malan. Malan, right. Go ahead. Have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance? That the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. That the name of the dead be not cut off from amongst his brethren. Go ahead. And from the gate of his place, he are witnesses this day. Now, watch this. What's the law that he's talking about? Get Deuteronomy 25, verse 5 and 6. What law is Boaz speaking of in Ruth, the fourth chapter? This is what a lot of you don't understand. Deuteronomy 25, verse 5 and 6. Deuteronomy 25, verse 5. If brethren dwell together. If brethren dwell together. And one of them die. And one of them die. And have no child. And have no child. The wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. The wife of the dead cannot marry outside unto a stranger. Go ahead. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her. Her husband's brother, meaning next of kin. Go ahead. And take her to him to wife. Mm -hmm. And perform the duty of an husband's and brother. And perform the duty of a husband's brother. Unto her. Mm. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth, shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead. So the firstborn would be in the name of the dead father. Understand that. Was that it? Yeah. Um, in, the, in, in the name of the brother which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. That his name, that's the point. That his name be not put out of Israel. So for example, he's my, neck, my brother. He dies. I would have to take his wife. Our firstborn child would be in his name. All the inheritance would go to the son in his name, not mine. That's the law. That's the law that was being applied in the book of Ruth. So you brothers and sisters at home, don't throw out Ruth. You're not trying to obey the laws of the Most High when you marry outside your people. So don't try it, all right? From there, let's go to Matthew 22, verse 39. I'm going to show you something. Boaz saw it as kindness, but there's a law that Boaz understood. He understood the law about raising up seed to the dead. Okay, now this also, Matthew 22, verse 39. Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. Mm -hmm. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You hear that? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's what Boaz was applying. Because Boaz respected the laws of the Most High. He said, why should the name of this brother in Israel be cut off? He said, I'll take Ruth as my wife and raise up children in the name of my dead brother. He loved his neighbor as he loved himself. Now watch this, Matthew 1. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 5. That's why Ruth and Boaz are mentioned in the genealogy of Christ. Matthew 1 verse 5. Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. And Solomon begat Booz of That's Bacal, Boaz. Mm -hmm. And Booz begat Obed of Ruth. Mm -hmm. Begat Obed of Ruth. Was that it in verse yeah, 5? That's it. That's why they're mentioned there. Why? Because they applied the law, love thy neighbors, you love yourself. That's why when Christ came, he was always teaching the Israelites, love ye one another. That's something you blacks and Latinos don't do. You black men, you despise each other, just like you Latin men despise each other. From there, let's go to Exodus chapter 12 and verse 38. 
Exodus chapter 12, verse 38. So, so for your time of mentioning Ruth to justify yourself is over, okay? Exodus 12, 38. Exodus chapter 12, verse 38. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and the flocks and the herds even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. That was 38? That was it's 39 now. So now, what happened? Read 38 again. All I want is 38. Verse 38. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and the flocks and the herds, and even very much cattle. So now, when the Most High delivered the 12 tribes of Israel, a mixed multitude of nations ran out behind the Israelites. We, get, we leave in Egypt too. We leave it with y'all. But why do I want to go there? Because you're going to meet a lot of, I call them uh, 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 Christian covered Israelites. That's what I call them. Because you got a lot of Yeshuaite Israelites who love that mixed multitude. And you will find these Israelite congregations with multitudes of white women and white men. And they're all interracial, married to each other up in there. And they go see the mixed multitude. They, these Israelites who hate themselves and hate their people will search the scriptures to break the Most High's laws. Now watch this. Deuteronomy 28 verse 43. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 43. Now, a mixed multitude ran out behind the Israelites. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. The stranger that is within thy, that the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. You hear what the law said? What the, what the prophecy is for the Israelites? This is Deuteronomy 28. Now read verse 15 for us, please. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. I'm bringing this back to your memory. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. If you don't hearken to the Lord your God and obey all these commandments, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Verse 43 now. Let's see about the strangers. Remember, the mixed multitude of strangers ran out behind us? This is what God says to us. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thy, with, that is within thee shall get up above thee. Who, very is, high. who is the stranger that was within us? The strange, strange nations that ran out behind us in Exodus 12, verse 38. Read it again. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. So what does the Lord say? He says, you Israelites, if you break my laws... You see those strange nations amongst you that ran out behind you in Egypt, from Egypt? If you break my laws, although they're your slaves now, those mixed nations, those strangers, they're going to get up above you very high. Read it again. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Meaning you Israelites would become the slaves. Those strangers are slaves now, but if you break my laws, they shall be the head and you shall be the tail. Read on. He shall lend to thee. The strangers shall be the ones lending to you. And thou shalt not lend to him. And you Israelites would not lend to them. Go ahead. He shall be the head. Those strangers, those nations that are your slaves right now, they shall be the head, meaning the leaders of you. And thou shalt be the tail. Meaning you shall be the slave. Understand that. Now, watch this. Let's go to Joshua 23. I'm going to remind you of the law again. Joshua 23, verse 11 through 13. I'm going to remind you of the law again. Okay. Joshua 23, verse 11. We want 11 to 13, and that's it. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves, that ye love the Lord your God. Else if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations. If you both go back from God's laws and cleave unto the remnants of the nations that are around you, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them. So what is Joshua reminding them? He said, if you leave the Most High's laws... And you make marriages with these other nations. And go in unto them, and they to you. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. See that? Joshua reminded you, Israelites. He said, if you make marriages with these other nations, the Lord your God would no longer go before you. Meaning he won't protect us no more. Go ahead. But they shall be snares and traps unto you. Meaning these other nations that you marry, they shall be snares and traps now, aren't these other nations that our people marry today snares and traps? That's right. Look what happened to OJ. You <laughs> see what right. happened, right? Got all caught up, all into the midst of madness. Tra snares and traps. Come on. 
Down to 13. And scourges in your side. And scourges in your side. Meaning they always going to cause you problems. Go ahead. And thorns in your eyes. Thorns in your eyes. Until you perish from off this good land until which you, the Lord your God had given you. Until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God given. So Joshua reminded us of the law. He said, in case you forgot what Moses commanded you, I'm going to remind you again. So now watch this. Let's go to Nehemiah 13. Nehemiah chapter 13, because now what happened after Joshua, sometime later, the Israelites went into captivity. The nation of Israel split into two kingdoms, and the Israelites went into captivity. You had the Assyrian captivity, you had the Babylonian captivity, then you had the Persian Mede captivity. Nehemiah, the prophet, is in the Persian captivity. Watch this. Nehemiah chapter 13, we want verse 23 to 27. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23. Watch this. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod. Mm -mm, Africans. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Nehemiah was able to go back to the land of Israel, our homeland. Then he said, in those days did I see what? I saw Jews that had married wives of Ashdod. Who were the Jews? Remember, the Jews comprised of three tribes primarily. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's who was termed Jews. Read it again. In those days, I also I saw Jews that had married wives of Ashdod. They married wives of Ashdod, Africans. Of Ammon. Ammon. And Jap of, we read Japanese. We already read the law earlier about not to be with them. Right. Go ahead. Of Ammon and of Moab. Moab, the Chinese. Go ahead. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod. And their children, when Nehemiah looked at their kids, he said their kids speak in the half in the language of what? Ashdod. Ashdod. And could not speak in the Jews' language. And could not speak Hebrew. So what was happening? The mothers took control of the kids, just like today. What we're reading here is synonymous for your life today. The mothers are the ones raising the kids. So at that time, the mothers didn't raise their kids in the laws of the Most High. The mothers were women of other nations. The mothers raised them in their language. The mothers taught them their gods. Read it again. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and Moab. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' languages, but according to the language of, language of each people. But according to the language of each people, whether it was Ammon or Moab, come on. And I contended with them. And I contended with them, come and on. And cursed them. And what? And cursed them. Ooh, he cursed those Israelites that did that, come on. And smote certain of them. And he smacked some of them upside the head. And plucked off their hair. And plucked off their hair. And made them swear by God, saying. And made them swear by the Most High God and say what? You shall not give your daughters unto their sons. So he's quoting the law to them. He said, you shall not give your daughters unto their sons. Come on. You shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons. And don't take their daughters unto your sons. For yourselves. For yourselves. Did not King Solomon... Wait, wait, read this part slow. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these? Did not King Solomon sin by these things? Man, didn't Solomon do the same thing? And it's called what? Read that again. I want you to stress that word. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? It's a sin! It's a sin! Meaning you're breaking God's laws when you marry people of other nations. Come on. Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God. And God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even Nevertheless, him, although Solomon was loved by the Most High, had all wisdom. It said, nevertheless. Even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Even him did outlandish women, wicked women of other nations, cause Solomon to sin. You read down to 27? Verse 27. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil? Shall we then hearken unto you, Nehemiah says, to do this what? Great what? This great evil. Evil. Do you hear what the Bible calls interracial marriage? Evil! Evil! And sin! Sin! Oh, you never read this in church. Was that it? No. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, to transgress against our God and marrying strange wives? Mm. So now, watch this. Let's go to the book of Ezra. E-Z-R-A. Ezra should be before Nehemiah, somewhere around there. Okay? 
Ezra chapter 10. We're going to get a little more in-depth in this history now. Because I, I, we're reading, what are we reading? The Bible. Your ministers never read this to you. Ezra chapter 10, we want verse 7 through 19. Ezra chapter 10, verse 7. And they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity, mm. that they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem. Now remember, Ezra also lived during the time of Nehemiah. This was during the Persian Mede captivity. Come on. And that whosoever would not come within three days, according to the counsel of the princes. So they made a proclamation. They said, we want all the jewelry. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and you scattered remnants, you got to come up to counsel. And whoever would not come up in three days, come on. According to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be for forfeited. He said, whatever land you got, this is Ezra, the high priest. So Ezra said, whatever land you got, whatever you own shall be forfeited you if you don't come up to counsel. Come on. And himself separated from the congregation. And yourself shall be separated, meaning put out, banished. Go ahead. Of those that had been carried away. Come on. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered, them, gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. In three days, Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together. It was the ninth month on the 20th day of the month. It was the ninth month on what day? On the 20th day of the month. Come on. And all the people sat in the street in the house of God, trembling because of this matter and for the great rain. So it was raining and all the people were trembling because of this great matter. Come on. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives. So now you see what the council's about. Read that part again. Ye have transgressed. Meaning you have sinned. By what? Have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Ezra's letting them know the Most High gave us mercy to allow us to come back to our homeland. And you men, you've transgressed the laws of God by marrying these women of other nations. Come on. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord, God of your fathers, and do his pleasure, and separate yourselves from the people of the land. And what? And separate yourselves from the people of the land. Separate yourselves from the people of the land. Do you hear the law? Separate yourselves from the people of the land. Hold that. I want you to hold that real quick. No, 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 I will, I'll get the verse later. Keep going, keep going. And from strange wives. So you Israelites that's in these other Israelite camps, and you're walking in these camps and saying, whoa, they all married to these other nations. Get out of there! If those Israelite leaders can't repent, leave those congregations. Be why? Because it's sin. It's transgression of the Most High's laws. Come on. We went down to 19, remember. Verse 12, then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, as thou hast said, so must we do. Here with all the congregation, they said, as thou hast said, we shall do. Because what Ezra proclaimed, did he make it up out of his own mind? No, it was based upon the laws of God. He read them the law. And the people said, we will obey the laws of God. Come on. Verse 13, but the people are many, and it is a time of much rain, and we are not able to stand without Neither is this a work of one day or two. So they said the people are many and the rain is heavy. We can't do this in one, one day. Go ahead, read it again. For we, but the people are many and it is a time of much rain and we are not able to stand without. Neither is this a work of one day or two. For we are many that have transgressed in this thing. It said many of us have transgressed in this thing. Come on. Let now all rulers of the congregation stand and let all them which have taken strange wives in our cities Come at appointed times, and with them elders of every city, and the judges thereof, until the fierce wrath of our God for this matter be turned from us. So they knew judgment was coming. They wanted the fierce anger of God to turn from them. So if you want the judgment of God to turn from you, repent! That's what this is showing us. We must repent. What verse was that? That was verse 14. We're going down to 17. I mean 19. Go ahead. Only Jonathan, the son of Asahel, and, Jehazi, and Jehaziah, the son of Tikvah, were employed about this matter. And Meshulam and Shabbathiah, the Levite, helped them. And the children of captivity did so. Come on. And Ezra the priest, with certain of the chief of the fathers, after the house of their father, and all of them by their names were separated, and sat down in the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter. So now this is the first day of the tenth month. Come on. 
And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of the first month. So by this time, they made an end of all the matters regarding the men who had taken wives of other nations. Come on. That was 17. Down, down to 19. Go ahead. And among the sons of the priests were found that had taken strange wives, namely of the sons of Jeshua, the son of Jezodach, and his brethren, Maasiah. So and, now they're revealing even the priests, the Levites, had sinned in this matter, go ahead. And Eliezer, and Jarib, and Jedaliah, and they gave their hand that they would put away their wives. Mm. And they being guilty, they offered a ram of the flock for their trespass. And they being what? Guilty, they offered a ram of the flock for their trespass. So do you hear this? Do you hear the law and the history? So now here we are. In the, in the United States of America, our last captivity, and many of you are guilty of the same sins our forefathers was doing. When will you repent? When will you make up your mind and say, I must repent? I must put away these women of the other nations. Huh? When will you do that? From there, let's go to uh, Malachi chapter 2. The book of Malachi chapter 2. I'm showing you that the Most High God is against interracial marriage. Malachi 2, we all we want is two verses. Verse 11 and 12. Malachi chapter 2, verse 11. Listen good. Judah hath dealt treacherously. Now he's going back to this black man, the American black man Judah. He says, Judah hath dealt treacherous, treacherously. And an abomination is committed in Israel. And an abomination is committed in Israel. What is the treacherous and what is the abomination that Judah has committed? And in Jerusalem, for Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved. How? And hath married the daughters of a strange God. Married the daughter of a strange God. He married Judah, the tribe of Judah, married the daughters of a strange God. That's, read that verse 11 again. Judah hath dealt one, treacherously. I want you to stress that A word in there. Judah hath dealt treacherously and an abomination. And abomination, abomination, abomination. Woo, come on. And an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange God. What verse was that? That was 11. 12 now. The Lord will cut off the man that do it. Wait, wait, read that again. The Lord will cut off the man that do it. Read that again. The Lord will cut off the man that do it. The Lord will cut off the man that do it. This. You hear what the Bible says? This ain't our words, brothers. This ain't how we feel. This is what the Bible says. Our job is to tell you and teach you what thus saith the Lord. Because your ministers have not taught you nothing. Come on. The Lord will cut off the man that do it. This. The master and the scholar. The master and the scholar. Why is he saying the master and the scholar? Because a lot of you so-called Negroes, you become masters and scholars in society, and you become uppity. Oh, 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 they make a few million dollars, and what's the first thing a Negro with money does? He marries the white woman. Look at your basketball players. Look at many of your entertainers, your actors, your athletes. They married the white woman. Don't they got little, they got, you know, the white man got little cliques of women that they raise up to marry these dumb for ball players. Purpose. For that song, how to get a nigga's money. Go out there and shake your booty because a nigga think he ain't made it until he get a white woman. That's right. Okay. Did you finish verse 12? The Lord will cut off the man that doeth this, the master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of Jacob, hmm. and him that offer an offering unto the Lord of hosts. And no matter even if you offer an offering, if you guilty of this sin, the Bible says God will cut you off. So what you doing? You and these other little f silly congregations, marrying wives of other nations, talking about the Lord's going to accept my Edomite wife or my Moabite wife or my African... No, no, no! The Lord ain't accepting that. We're reading the law to you now. We're reading the history and the prophecy to you now. From there, let's go to Tobit. In the Apocrypha, the book of Tobit, chapter 4. We want verse 12 and 13. Okay? So now, you know the only thing that or the man has up on a woman? Meaning this. The Israelite man, remember how genealogy is determined. It's determined upon the seed of the man. Meaning this. If a black man or Latin man who's an Israelite has a child with a woman of another nation, yeah, the children are Israelites. The children are Israelites. For example, you know, I'm, uh, you know, Ruth the Moabite 
Remember, it said Ruth and Boaz had a child that was raised up until Malan, right? Uh -huh. And that's the genealogy where Christ came through. You got these Israelites that say, the Lord ain't dealing with you if you have mixed parents. Shut up. You Israelites that say that stupidity, just be quiet. King David's great-grandmother was Ruth the Moabite. That's right. She was a, in the, their child was through the lineage that Christ came out of. So be quiet. The difference was that that child was an Israelite child. Why? Because Boaz put the seed in Ruth and the son. You are what your father is. Understand that. I don't want you to be confused. You are, so I'm going to say it again. You are what your father is. You are not what your mother is. See, they're following a the so-called white man. Science. Right. <laughs> Remember, right. no, you can get an orange seed and put it any place all over the earth. What kind of tree is going to grow up? An orange tree. Right. Whether it's an apple seed, whatever the seed is, that's what the tree is going to become. So the man puts the seed in the woman. So whatever that man is, that's what that child shall be. Some of you better thank the Lord your father was Negro. A lot of you are ashamed, huh? Oh, my father, he's black. You better thank the most high God. Because if your father's any other race, you finished. And, and then growing up, you hear those that, they're so excited that they're mixed. I'm half this, I'm half right. that. There's no mixing with the most Thank high. Thank you, exactly. It's what the seed of your father is. There's no such thing as mixed with God. Exactly, because that means, that means David was half Chinese. No, David right. wasn't half Chinese. <laughs> David wasn't half Moabite. There's no halvesies in the Bible. Exactly. You are what your father is. Now, Tobit 4, we want verse, no, you know, Tobit 4, I'm before I forget the thought, verse 12 and 13. Because remember, we are mentioned talk about the woman next. Go ahead. Right. Tobit chapter 4, verse 12. Beware of all whoredom, my son. Beware of all whoredom. What's he talking about whoredom? What's this? Go ahead. And chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy father. Take a wife of what? Of the seed of thy father. Of the seed of thy fathers. Come on. And take not a strange woman to wife. And take not a strange woman to wife. Which is not of thy father's tribe. Which is not of thy father's tribe. Come on. For we are the children of the prophets. For we, you blacks and Latinos, you are the children of the prophets. Come on. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go ahead. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning... Even that they all married wives of their own kindred. They married wives of their own kindred. This was even before Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was before Israel became a nation. But they married women of their own kinsfolk. Go ahead. And were all blessed in their children. And their seed shall inherit the land. Their seed shall inherit the land. Watch this. Now therefore, my son. Watch it. Love thy brethren. Love your brethren. That's what a lot of our people don't do. And despise not in thy heart thy brethren, the son of thy daughters of thy people. Writer, producer Theron Cal says he's on a mission to help black folks. He says black folks are filled with self-hate. Melody Cochran is the daughter of the famed attorney Johnny L. Cochran. Her lifestyle includes relationships and activities that, according to Theron, makes her a sellout. Please welcome Theron Cal and Melody Cochran. Mm. to start off with you. Do you know this woman to call no, her a sellout? No, I've never met her. Why I've is a sellout? So why is she? Uh, my definition of a sellout is somebody who's black who's harming or hurting other blacks and someone who's black who dates and or marries non-black. So what uh, category does Melody fill under, fall under for you to call her a sellout? Well, I don't know, but if she's dating outside of a race, then she would fall into category number two. Okay, but I, I guess the question I'm asking is, uh, apparently, from the information we got, you feel the lifestyle that she is uh, participating in makes her a sellout. Absolutely. So I'm trying to get to the point of what, what about her lifestyle oh, okay. have you well, categorized usually, as selling yes. out? Usually when somebody sells out in terms of dating, interracial dating, uh -huh. usually what's going on is there's three things that go on. One, they don't like being black. Two, they're not too comfortable with themselves. Now, is this your own opinion or how did, how did you get... And three, they, they, they basically would prefer white culture. Okay. Okay. So um, what do you base this on? Is this your own this is, personal? This is the research. You know, in doing the sellout diaries, we did a lot of research. We talked to a lot of people. Um, I've been on this planet for 30 some odd years. And I mean, it's common sense. I mean, people don't, people avoid what they don't like. They gravitate towards what they like. You're right. So we don't go out and, and you know, eat things we don't like. We don't hang around people we don't like. 
And when you choose to exclusively date outside of your race, I mean, you don't have to do an extensive study to figure out what's going on. She's mm -hmm. avoiding black men because she doesn't like them. I mean, we can be honest. Now, Theron, what if you like a little <laughs> variety? That's okay. You can sell out and Are then come back home. And okay, that's all. So I mean, we don't have a problem with that. <laughs> so is this only for black culture or for all? Okay. With dating outside of my race. Okay, would you tell the truth? You don't like black people. You don't like black oh. men. Let's tell the truth. It's okay. Nothing no. wrong with it. But wouldn't no. you date black men if you like them? Read that part again. And despise not in thy heart thy brethren, the sons and daughters of thy people, and not taking a wife of them. For in the pride is destruction and much trouble, and in lewdness is decay and great want, for lewdness is the mother of family. So you hear that? It says, don't despise your people in not marrying one of them. So what is the Bible saying when you marry outside your race? You hate your people. Nicole Marchand is celebrating another birthday. At 31, she's accomplished a lot. She's a prosecuting attorney and running for state court judge. It'll be a $500 fine. Nicole isn't the kind of woman you'd find standing by on the sidelines of life. But you would find her here, at the Georgia Dome, cheering on the Atlanta Falcons. You've heard of a man's man. Nicole is the quintessential man's woman. She appears to have it all, and yet, she's still single. 42% of black women have never been married. That's double the number of never married white women. We broached this serious dilemma with comedian turned relationship guru Steve Harvey, author of the book Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man. There are still a lot of good men out there who are being overlooked. Harvey says black women don't have to settle, but may need to compromise. You a corporate exec? Does he have to be a corporate exec? You make $150,000 a year. He has to make 150 dollars or above? That, that's your requirement? Like many black men, she's also open to dating outside her race. In fact, in the past decade, the number of black women entering interracial marriage has more than doubled. I just feel that there's a lot of taboo associated with dating black women because I don't think that they're necessarily going to want to take us home to see mama. You hate your people because a lot of you hate yourselves. A lot of you black women too. You know what they say? Well, there's no black people in my circle. Then you better change your circle of friends. Fine, you go to work. You got all the other nations around you, but you better go home to your people. You better go home to your people and marry a son or daughter of your people. You got basketball players where well, there's no black women around from you. Lying right. black men. A bunch of liars that you are. You married a white woman because you hate yourself. You got low, what is that? Low, low self-esteem. Self huh? You feel you ain't made it unless you got the white woman on your arm, okay? That's how you feel. That's what you think. And the Bible proves it. God says you despise your people when you marry somebody outside your race. Melody says she doesn't date black men because, in her words, they're cheap. And they're always making excuses for why they can't succeed. Melody also says, I think I'd rather stick pins in my eyes than date a black man. I think they're cheap. They call you up on the phone. Even if I see like a cute black guy, I give him my phone number. He calls me and he just wants to talk. He talks to never say, you know, let's go out or let's do this. It's just talk, talk for, I mean, till my face is blue. I'm like, I don't want to talk. I could, I could be doing something else. Then if they do want to take you out, if you go out, it's barbecues or something tacky. What do they tell you about black women? They say that uh, they're greedy, that, uh, Sort of like her, how she is. They, they. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not greedy. I work but, six but, days a week. I have my own business. Okay? Right. They, they, don't, they don't. They want. I just have a higher standard than what they're willing to give. When right. they get to the high level, they get a white woman. All I have are the scraps. I don't want them. Okay. From there, let's go to Nehemiah chapter nine in the Bible. Nehemiah chapter 9. I'm going back to the issue on the strangers because these, you got these little funky little Israelite congregations popping up and I got the white woman, brother. I'm going to show you what the law says again in case you forgot. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 2. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 2. 
And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers. And the seed of Israel, meaning all the children of Israel, what? Separated themselves from all strangers. They separated themselves from all strangers. Separated themselves from all strangers. You know, it's going to be a sad day. A sad day when you realize that this Bible is a true book. This Bible is the only true book. I'm going to show you something. Habakkuk 2. Go to Habakkuk 2, verse 5 through 9. Okay? Habakkuk 2, 5 through 9. Okay? Watch this. Okay? Because a lot of you, you, you get in this thing, you just want to marry all the other nations. Some of you are a rainbow coalition. Habakkuk 2, 5 through 9. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 5. Yea, also, because he transgressed by wine. This he that transgresses by wine is the so-called white man of the United States of America. We've gone over it in other topics, so search those topics, uh, but keep going. Yea, also, because he transgresses by wine. Now, the wine that he transgresses by is his lies, his political lies, his political agenda, his constitution. For example, they allow you in the constitution, uh, uh, you have certain... Inal inalienable rights. You can go out and marry whoever you want. Go ahead. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home. But this man doesn't keep at home. Go ahead. Who enlarges his desire as hell. He enlarges his desire as hell. Go ahead. And is as death. This man, wherever his policies go, his democracy, it's as death. His Christianity is as death. Go ahead. And cannot be satisfied. This man can't be satisfied with his political agendas. Go but ahead. gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. This is the proof that this is talking about the United States of America. Read that part again, that precept. But gathereth unto him all nations. He gathereth unto him all nations. And heapeth unto him all people. And heapeth unto him all peoples. What nation is this talking about? The United States of America has all nations here. This ain't talking about Iraq. This ain't talking about uh, Kuwait. This is talking about the United States of America. Read on. Shall not all these take up a parable against him? All the nations that are here shall take up a parable against this man. And a taunting proverb against him and say... What are you going to say? Woe to him that increases that which is not his. Because America increases their political agenda by taking down many nations. He increases that which is not his. Come on. How long? How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. With all his, all the nations are here. That's the thick clay with their lies. Go ahead. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? Shall not all these nations that are already here rise up suddenly shall, and shall what? That shall bite thee. That shall bite thee. And awake that shall vex thee. What does it say? And awake that shall vex thee. What do they call these terrorists that's, that's laying dormant? Sleeper cells. Sleeper cells. So read that part again. That awake. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? Here it come. And awake that shall vex thee. And awake and awake. Why are they going to awake and vex them? Because they're sleeper cells here. Come on. And thou shalt be for booty unto gonna, them. They're going to take this place down. What verse was that? That was seven. Go ahead, down to nine. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. Because America has spoiled many nations. All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. All the remnant of the nation shall spoil thee. Go ahead. Because of men's blood. Why? Because of men's blood. Because America has done much wickedness to the nations of this world. Go ahead. And for the violence of the land. Mm -hmm. And the violence of the land. They've done violence here to many of the nations. The American Indian owned this place first. The tribe of Gad. The tribe of Reuben. The tribe of Issachar. America did much violence to them. Go ahead. What verse is And for the violence of the land of the city and of all that dwell therein. Mm. What verse was that? That was eight. Verse, read down to nine. Woe to him that covet an evil covetousness to his house that he may set his nest on high. Woe unto him that covet, covet, read that part again. That coveted an evil covetousness. That coveteth an evil covetousness to set his house that he may set his nest on high. That he may set his nest on high. That's talking about when they set their nest on the moon. That's the high is talking about. Why is it saying nest? Because when America landed on the moon, they said the eagle has landed. Was that it in nine? That he may be delivered from the power of evil. That he may be delivered from the power of evil, meaning the return of Christ who's coming with destruction. From there, Revelation 18, 1 through 5. Revelation 18. I'm going to show you saying the same thing. Revelation 18. Revelation 18, 
Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. Come on. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen. So John sees in a vision that Babylon the Great, which is the United States of America, is fallen. Go ahead. It's fallen and has become the habitation of devils. Because when this place is destroyed, John sees in a vision that this place becomes a habitation of devils. Just like Isaiah 34 says. Go ahead. And the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful because bird. Because only the owls and the ravens and the vultures are going to inhabit this place. Go ahead. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So how do you know this is talking about America? Read that part again. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. For all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath. Her wine, America's wine, is their politics, their religions. All nations take part in one or the other. Read that part again. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So what nation are all nations following? Are all nations following China? No. Are all nations following Africa? No. Are all nations following Kuwait? No. <laughs> all nations are following the United States of America. People dying again in this country. Exactly. They gotta close the borders up. <laughs> exactly. Come on. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Meaning all the kings of the earth have joined in, polit in their politically, they've politically joined or religiously joined with America. Go ahead. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacy. So all the nations that do buying and trading with America have become rich. Come on. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Watch this. Come out of her, my people. This is the proof that the Israelites are slaves in America. Read it again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. So, come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. So, God's people are captive in the United States of America, called Babylon the Great. Come on. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. That you be not partakers of her sins. So God wants us to come out mentally, come out spiritually. That's what he's talking about. Don't take part in the sins that are taking place here in America. Come on. And that you receive not of her plague. Because if you take part in the sins of America, you shall receive of the plagues of America. What verse was that? Verse 4. Come on. For her sins have reached unto heaven. For the sins of America have reached unto heaven. Remember, 1969, America did what? They claimed the moon for theirs. That's saying the same thing Habakkuk chapter 2 said that we just read in verse 9. So read it again. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. And God has remembered her iniquities. That was down to 5? That was 5. Now watch this. Go back now to Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 2. No, I'm sorry, Isaiah 13. Isaiah 13, verse 12. How can I forget this? This is going to follow up with Habakkuk 2, Revelation, Revelation 18. Now we're in Isaiah 13. We want 12 to 16. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 12. Now you might have thought, oh, did he change the topic? No, we're still dealing with interracial marriage. Remember, it's all nations are here. So now it says, come out from amongst them, right? That you be not partakers in their sins. You're not meant to join in their religions, their politics, and you're definitely not supposed to be marrying these people of other nations. Now watch this. Isaiah 13, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 12. We're reading 12 to 16. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. So God says he will make a man more precious than fine gold. So you're black boys and Latin boys. God promised he shall make them more precious than fine gold. Watch this. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Come on. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place. So God will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place. What is that talking about? Thermonuclear destruction when Christ makes his second coming. Come on. And the wrath of the Lord's hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Come on. And it shall be as a chaste row. And it shall be as a chaste row. The it here is talking about the Babylonians. Not the ancient Babylonians, which were the Ethiopians, but the people of Babylon the Great. Who are the people of Babylon the Great? The so-called white man, Edom. And it, read it again. And it shall be as a chaste row. So the so-called white man is going to be like a chaste row, which is a chaste deer. Go ahead. And as a sheep that no man taketh. And in this day, no man's going to take up this man. No man's going to try to protect this man. Listen good to what the prophecy says. Watch this. 
They shall every man turn to his own people. The prophecy is when the day of this destruction, every man shall turn to his own people. Every man shall turn to his own people. Go ahead. And now, why is that important? Because we read that in this place, it's a mixture of all nations. You have all people and nations and kindreds here. The prophecy, read that again. They shall every man turn to his own people Come on. and flee everyone into his own land. Everybody, everybody's going to try to run to their own land. Watch this. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. I mean, who's, who, who's that talking about going to be thrust through? The so-called white man. That's the chase deer. That's the chaste row, because now it's judgment time. This is judgment upon the so-called white man, the nation of Edom, who rules Babylon the Great. Judgment is coming on them here. Read that part again. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. Go ahead. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Everyone that is joined unto them shall what? Shall fall by the sword. You remember the Rodney King verdict? Remember what happened. I need you to open your minds. When Rodney King and I don't know, I think it happened with OJ too. When people went crazy, and Ro Reginald Denny, right. that was uh, him out of the truck, right. hit him in the head with that. Brick. And every black woman that was holding on to the white man, I'll protect you. Got her, act, got her behind what? whooped, what? whooped, almost put to death. So we read this is going. Uh, this is going to be a step higher than that. Okay, read that part again. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So you brothers want to marry the white woman? You sisters want to marry the white man? The Bible said what? Everyone what? And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Mm, come on. Their children also shall be dashed wait, wait, to my pieces. my biracial baby. Their <laughs> my biracial baby. Go ahead. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Now, you know why that's heavy right there? A lot of you sisters, and I've met many of you when I was growing up, they would always say, I don't want no black man. I don't want no dark. He definitely can't be dark skinned. They go, I want, I want the white man because I want my baby to be light skinned in it. I want him to have blue eyes and green eyes. I want him to have straight yellow hair. I can say that nothing their loved ones can say will change the fact that they feel trapped inside hideously ugly faces and bodies. Our next guest, Alicia, says that in her case, the reason she feels so ugly is because her mom, Essie, made her feel that way. Alicia, tell us your story. Actually, all my life I felt ugly because of my dark complexion. When I was younger, my mom would make differences between my sister and I. She would dress us in outfits that were similar and alike, but she would comment on how pretty or nice she looked, but I never got the same comment. And also in school, when we were referred to, we would both get in trouble. And when I get in trouble, she get in trouble too. They would refer to me as the dark one instead of the light one. And my mom would also compare us to the point to where she would discipline me harder, harsher than she would my sister. And you think it's because of the sk your skin coloring? Well, yeah, she would make comments on the fact that I reminded her of my dad. My dad was dark complected too, and she, dis di she disliked him and took it out on me to the point and said she, you know, disliked me because I looked like my dad. Well, no, when I was so growing up with my mom, my son, when I was carrying my older son, she would tell me the comment that she wished my son was not dark. She didn't want a dark grandbaby. And that affected me. Well, tell her, how did that affect you? It made me feel unloved. Yeah. It made I me feel you didn't accept me for being a dark-skinned daughter instead of the bright daughter. But do you realize, Mom, that she would rub her face with a scouring pad to try to lighten her skin? No. You didn't know that? No. Lauren, uh, you have a, a theory on this. Yes, well, it, it, these, this stems from some very deep-rooted issues in the African-American culture and community. It stems from slavery. They're all going, mm -hmm. it stems, Yeah, it is. And, and these issues are very alive and well. I see many African-American sisters and brothers in the audience going, yeah, because we've all grown up with that. We live in a, ver a society dominated by white media, white images, and therefore we're bombarded with this notion that whatever is closest to white is right. That's what a lot of you sisters have said. And I grew up listening to your evil speech. But you know what? The Most High is going to get the last laugh. And you know what's the only difference between you and the black man, black woman? The black man that repents, if his, ch his children are Israelites, if they get their minds right, those children are Israelites. They can be saved. They can be delivered. 
but there's something different with you, black woman. Your children is not going to be the seed of Israel. Your children, black woman, will be the seed of the white man. Now, Candace was here to see if her ex-boyfriend, Andrew, was a father of her biracial child. Candace said that Andrew admitted he's a racist and would never claim a biracial child. Take a look at this. I'm here because I had a biracial child with mm -hmm. a man who, very, very, I just want to say, it, he's a racist. And it's strange because he's white and... <laughs> Wait a minute. You have a bi biracial child with yes. a man who is a racist? Yes. Your children will be the seed of the Chinese man. Your children will be the seed of the Arab or the African man. That's right. There's no salvation no for them. Salvation. No salvation for them. They're going to get punished. Read, read that again so they understand. We ain't putting words in the Bible's mouth. Call the, the verse and read it. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 16. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravaged. What verse is that? That was 16. Now, so you, we can't change it, sister. Brother, we can't change the prophecy. Now watch this. Go to 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians 6. Now remember we read in Nehemiah 9. Okay, read Nehemiah 9 real quick for us so we don't forget the thought. Nehemiah 9 and 2. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 2. Mm, watch and the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers and stood and confessed their sins. So now, let's see if that changed in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 6, let's read verse 14 through 18. 2 Corinthians 6, we want to see if the law changed. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Go ahead. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Come on. And what concord hath Christ with Balak? Come on. Or what hath he that believeth with an infidel? That's the other nations too. Go ahead. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Watch this. For ye are the temple of the living God. You Israelites, you are the temple of the living God. Come on. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Come on. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, Wherefore, the wait, wait, we got to read that again, because that's saying the same thing Nehemiah 9 and 2 said. Read that again. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Read it again. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Read it again. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Wherefore, come out from amongst them, and be ye separate. Ye separate. So what are you brothers talking about? It's okay to marry women of other nations. What Bible are you reading? And you black women, are you just crazy? Y'all just sitting around waiting for death to come your way because that's the prophecy that's going to come. Death and destruction upon you and your children. And a lot of you brothers that got wives of other nations, you better watch your children because a lot of times the wives are the ones that raise up these, these little kids you got and, a, and your white wife or your Chinese wife is the one filling their head with foolishness. Like Tiger Woods' mom filled his mind with Buddhism, okay? He's talking about, well, if I, if I had just retained, remained being a Buddhist, I wouldn't be in a sex scandal. Oh, yes, you would. That's why the, the law said there would be snares and traps amongst you. The most I know what he's talking about. The most I know is what he created of all the nations. You think God didn't know what he meant? Read, watch this. Deuteronomy 32 and 7, I think it is. Watch this. Deuteronomy 32 and 7. Read that quick. I think that's it about the most side of the nations. 32 and 7. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many ge generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee. Watch verse thy, 8 is the point. Thy elders and they will tell thee. Watch this. When the most high divided to the nations their inheritance. When the most high divided to the nations their inheritance. When he separated the sons of Adam. When he what? When he separated the sons of Adam. When he what? When he separated the sons of Adam. God always separated the nations. But America has taught you, no, we shall bring all nations together. And you foolish black men, you foolish black women, you foolish Latin men, you foolish Latin women have fallen for the wine of their fornication. You've fallen for their lies. And said, I can marry all any nation I want to marry. And you've disregarded your creator. You've disregarded the one true God and his son, Jesus the Christ. Back to Corinthians now. Back to Corinthians. 
So you see, there's no private interpretation. We're going precept upon precept upon precept. Showing you the Bible has not changed. You've changed. You've been manipulated. You've been deceived. What verse you at? Verse 17. Se call the whole thing. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 17. Come on. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Wherefore come out from amongst them and be ye separate. Where are we reading? The New Testament. Come on. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. Touch not the unclean thing means what? Don't be partakers in the sins of America. Don't be partakers in their lies here, their religious lies, their political lies, talking about, I can marry whoever I want, and I can celebrate their holidays. God bless us all. Everyone, that's a lie. That's a lie. Come on. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So the only way God's going to receive you is if you touch not the unclean thing. Don't touch their political lies, their religious lies. Don't fall for the lies in their constitution. The Bible is your constitution. This is your book, black man and Latin man. This is your constitution. Believe it and repent, okay? So with that, brothers and sisters, we can't keep this telecast alone going on without you. We need your financial help. We need your donations. And for more information, visit our website at www.israelunite.org. And with that, brothers and sisters, we give all praises to the Most High and His Son, Jesus the Christ, and we say Shalom. Shalom, Israel. For a copy of this show and all other shows, please visit our website at originalroyalty.com.